turning up. From the Evening Standard in London, this is The Leader. Hi, I'm David Marsland, and we have picked quite the week to release a brand new daily opinion podcast. There is a lot going on, and we want to help you make sense of it. The show's new, but The Evening Standard's been doing this for nearly 200 years. So, as many an editor has instructed through the corridors of this very newsroom, let's get on with it. I think the people who are here rooting for Boris just absolutely love Boris Johnson. The standards are Yisha Hazarikas in Manchester for the Tory party conference. We've heard what's happening on stage, but what's really going on when you move away from the podium? Also, it's called the leader column and it carries clear, sharp opinions on the key news stories of the day. Our associate editor, Julian Glover, rakes through the standards archives to explain the power of the editorial column, also known as the leader. And... Prince Harry makes conservation his priority as he visits Malawi. Taken from the Evening Standards editorial column, this is The Leader. Grab a paper to read the whole thing or head to standard.co.uk. In a moment, I'll be talking to Aisha Hazarika on The Mood in Manchester. Fighting a losing battle. No! To use these military metaphors. No! Or should I stick to my guns? Yes! We are leaving the European Union. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of days. Are you suggesting you're saying it didn't happen, that she made it up? I, I look, I, I, I'm just saying what I've said. And uh, I think that what the public want to hear is what we're doing for them and for the country. Thank you. Thank you so much. There seems to be some enthusiasm in this hall for getting Brexit done. (laughs) The ministers, the cabinet secretaries, the grandees all want their speeches to sound like they represent a proud government getting Brexit done and moving fast on domestic policy. The Chancellor has announced a £25 billion spending spree on improving roads. But off stage and outside the conference centre, the headlines are full of scandal and the Westminster whispers are of plots against the government. Can people really be won back to the Tory cause by promising to widen the A46 around Newark? Here's what The Standard thinks. Today we report just 36% of voters think Boris Johnson's a capable leader, which is lower than even his predecessor scored after her election disaster in 2017. And that's before allegations about his behaviour keep turning up in the news. Is the reason the Conservative Party wants an election because it has a brilliant plan for Brexit? There would be a case, after all, if Mr Johnson had secured a deal and wanted the country to back it so that the Commons could too. But he hasn't got a deal. He doesn't even seem to be trying. He's got nothing to put to the country other than his conference slogan, Get Brexit Done, which is really a reminder that he hasn't done it yet. The frustrating thing is that amid all this, there are glimpses of what could be a winning strategy. The Prime Minister, Mr Johnson's promise to be, has a lot to offer the country. But in Manchester, his party isn't showing us that side. When the election comes, it will regret it. Well, the standards, Ayesha Hazarika, is in Manchester and she's managed to sneak away to a quiet room to give us the lowdown on everything she's been hearing. Ayesha, there's been a lot of headlines about the Prime Minister in recent days. Number 10's denying he squeezed a woman journalist's thigh under a table at lunch. How is all of this affecting the atmosphere at the conference? I think the people who are here, you know, rooting for Boris just absolutely love Boris Johnson. It's almost Trumpian, you know, it's a bit like a bit cultish in terms of the adoration for Boris Johnson. It feels like he could literally stab a puppy and nobody would actually care about it in the same way that at the Labour Party conference, you know, Jeremy Corbyn is, is, has this kind of iconic um, status. So I think for them, they, they don't care about these allegations and they're hoping that the members of the public um, who want Brexit will, will also um, not care. But It's not a good look for the Prime Minister. Look, all of this stuff goes to his character. It goes to his integrity. Um, You know, these allegations are very serious from a a very serious, well-respected 
journalists who, of course, used to work um, for the Evening Standard. So I think it's not a good look. But what about outside that cult of Boris that you're talking about there? Is there anyone listening to the moderates? I think definitely One Nation Tories, moderate Tories, however you want to badge them, they are feeling very much um, socially excluded at this conference. It doesn't really feel like it's their party anymore. And in, in many ways, it isn't. The the dominant culture right now, the people who are on top, are the Boris Johnson Brexit loyalists. And it's very, very similar to what's happening in the Labour Party. I mean, we are doing a, a diary story today. Um, and we, we went to this event last night where some of the moderates, some of the One Nation Tories are saying, look, we've got to do what the moderates in the Labour Party did from the 1980s, which is very um, slowly build up a different alternative, build up a different narrative and keep, you know, pushing that line, stay and fight and eventually it will come good. But I think the moderates in both parties realise that they are in the minority now and that they, if they want to stay and fight, they can and they will, but it will take quite a long time for them to to climb back up again because they are, they're sort of the fringes now. I mean, it's very interesting about what's happening in both parties. These people are not, you know, they used to be top dog in, in, in both Labour and the Conservatives and that is not the case anymore. And is the action outside the conference affecting anything at all? The opposition parties have been kind of huddling up at Westminster today with this plot to bring down the government, perhaps with a vote of no confidence this week. Is there a fear that an interim PM maybe Jeremy Corbyn, could be a real threat. I think people are paying attention to it, but they're... And, and Jeremy Corbyn's name has come up a lot. Like yesterday in the opening um, speeches in the hall and definitely in the fringes, I mean, the if you wanted to get a sort of um, cheer in terms of, you know, who's the, the bogeyman, Jeremy Corbyn is the name that comes up. And certainly um, every single Conservative, but whether they're a One Nation Conservative or whether they're a, a hard Brexiteer, they're all saying, look, do you really, really want Jeremy Corbyn as um, the, uh, to put him into Downing Street? So he has definitely been held up as a big threat. What is interesting, though, today, it looks like the talks that the opposition parties are having. The question is, is Joe Swinson going to capitulate on the fact that she has said there's no way I will put Jeremy Corbyn into Downing Street even as an interim prime minister? I think all eyes are going to be on her and if she sticks by that and she refuses, the question is, is Jeremy Corbyn going to accept that and will he accept a different leader, um, somebody like Margaret Beckett? I, I, think, that, I think that's going to be hard for Jeremy Corbyn. And there is one other fierce leadership competition taking place at the conference. Which MP can get the most selfies taken with them? I understand Liz Truss is winning. <laughs> I actually saw Liz Truss last night and Liz Truss is like living her best life at this conference. She was basically saying, I've done done my conference speech. It's out the way. I can just have fun and have loads of drinks and be outrageous and just like up my social media game and have loads of selfies. Um, I'm quite disappointed. I should have actually got a selfie with Liz Truss. That's what I should have done. And you can read more from backstage at the Conservative Conference in the Londoner pages of today's Evening Standard. Later. Prince Harry tells us to look up at the trees as he puts conservation at the heart of his trip to Malawi. And in this peaceful moment, why not take a second to rate and share the podcast? Back in a sec. What is The Leader? Apart from your new Essential Daily Opinion podcast, it's the industry term for a newspaper's editorial column. It's rarely very long, but it's still one of the most powerful and by some feared parts of any paper. With me now is The Evening Standard's associate editor, Julian Glover, to explain a bit more. Every day, The Evening Standard, like newspapers around the world, carries a column. It's not signed, it's shaped and led by the editor, not always written by the editor, and it's called The Leader column, and it carries clear, sharp opinions on the key news stories of the day. It helps inform you, it entertains you, hope they're well written, fresh, make you think, central to any great newspaper. And we're very proud of the ones in the Evening Standard. Does it have any power? Sometimes they can change things. 
You never quite know which leaders will. I've been involved on different newspapers with leaders, some of which have made the news, some of which perhaps shorten the career of prime ministers. Other ones maybe don't. The core, though, is that they're fresh, thoughtful, topical and have a punch. And I think the Evening Standards ones at the moment can be incredibly strong. They are essential reading and we really want people to pay attention, listen and then make their own minds up. Now, you said there that it's not always written by the editor. Now, I'm not saying that you've ever written an editorial column because, of course, the old idea is that we never knew. Why? Why do we never get these bylined? When newspapers began, no one knew who wrote any of it. It was put together. You look at a 19th century newspaper. I've been back in the archives looking at copies of the Evening Standard going back to the 1820s when this great London paper began. And nobody had their name. Slowly over the years, bylines crept in. People were proud of what they're writing. Characters came forward. So today's Evening Standard, nearly all the pieces you'll see have got a byline. But what makes the leaders different is they don't. There's a little bit of mystery to them, a little bit of edge. There's something different. They're not just a column by somebody expressing their view. They're a collective view. They're a sense of what the paper thinks. They're consistent, I hope. Not always. We try for that. They're a view that is thought through as the voice of the paper, not just of any one journalist. That makes them different. Do you have, having looked through the archive, do you have any particular favourites or is there anything that stood out for you? Well, the thing you do if you go to the archive, of course, is look for the great news events of the day and see what we said. So I went I went back to see what we said on, on the Titanic, the day the Titanic sank. And the striking thing is the day the news broke, the Standard took it to the streets of London. But like all the other journalists in, in the UK at that point, we were told, the Standard told readers, that the Tan had it was afloat and sailing for Halifax. The headline was rescued, lifeboats launched. And then the next day, the scale of that tragedy hit. And, and there's a very powerful editorial in the paper, a leader in the paper, reflecting on the strength of nature and the way humans can't fight it. I had a look at the paper from the Second World War as well. The start of... Of, of, of the evacuation of Dunkirk, the standard was very honest. It told people this was a defeat. Don't think this is any kind of victory. Not a thing to be proud of, but a thing to be resolute about. And it encouraged people to think we would win the Battle of the Air, which is the Battle of Britain that then began to take place. So it was clear and honest. And one of the things that stands out from those Second World War leaders is they're not jingoistic. They aren't just trumpeting success. They're spelling out hard truths and giving people reassurance. That perhaps is what a leader should do. And, of course, The Evening Standard now has launched this podcast, The Leader. It's about time we heard the newspaper's voice, isn't it? Absolutely. And people can can listen, hear hear how we've discussed some of the ideas in The Leader, perhaps some of the people writing on the comment pages as well. It's a bit broader than just the core of The Leader column. But every day we'll be putting out our view, as we have for nearly 200 years, and The Leader podcast is now part of that. The Duke of Sussex is learning a bit of what it takes to run a picture desk. He's asking everyone to send him photos of trees, some of which he'll share on his official Instagram account. He's doing all this while visiting Malawi's Luwandi National Park as he steps up his conservation awareness campaign. Here's the standards take. Prince Harry's heartfelt call today for everyone to look up and share the beauty of trees could not have been made in a better place. On a visit to Lawande National Park in Malawi, he has seen a conservation success story. Malawi is one of Africa's poorest and most densely populated countries, as well as one of its friendliest and most beautiful. And despite all the pressures, it has also managed to protect and increase its wildlife and save some of its beautiful forests. Some of that is thanks to the brave work of people such as Matthew Talbot from the Coldstream Guards, who was killed in May when he was charged by an elephant as he worked with local rangers. The Duke is backing a wonderful cause, the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, which has brought almost 50 countries together to create woodland and fight climate change. We need to do it here too. Britain's native trees are in deep peril because of disease and we need many more. It's not only in Africa that we should look up and share the beauty of trees. That's The Leader, taken from the Evening Standard's editorial column. It's our opinion, but we want yours. Get in touch and continue the conversation through social media. Use the hashtag TheLeaderPodcast. And you can talk to us on demand, too. Just ask your smart speaker for the news from The Evening Standard. There's a bulletin at 7 every morning. The podcast is back at 4 tomorrow.